Welcome back to Explaining Everything, the channel where we turn everyday materials into wild stories. Today's question comes from one of our curious viewers, Ralph Bona underscore 96. Thanks for the suggestion, Ralph. You asked, how is fiberglass made? Awesome question, because fiberglass sounds futuristic, like something Iron Man's suit is made of. But now nah, it starts with sand, plain, boring, get in your shoes and ruin your day sand. Yet somehow we've turned it into one of the strongest, lightest materials around. So how did we do that? Let's go from beach sand to superhero stuff right here on Explaining Everything. Like most good stories, this one begins with sand having an identity crisis. The main ingredient is silica sand, the same stuff in your hourglass or beach volleyball court. But that's not enough. Fiberglass makers throw in some extra ingredients like limestone, soda ash, dolomite, and boron compounds. Why? Because melting pure silica takes around 1,700 degrees Celsius and nobody's electric bill needs that kind of drama. These add-ins lower the melting point and make the glass easier to work with. Once mixed, the sandy cocktail is fed into a giant furnace, basically an angry pizza oven from hell. Inside, temperatures hit 1,400 to 1,700 degrees Celsius, hot enough to make lava jealous. The sand mixture turns into a glowing orange river of molten glass, swirling like something straight out of Mordor's home and garden. Before it moves on, the glass is refined. Bubbles are removed, consistency checked, and everything stirred until it's perfectly smooth. This part's crucial because any weird lump or air bubble could ruin the fibers later. In short, this is the part where sand officially stops being beach material and becomes future boat material. Now it's molten, angry, and ready to be spun like a contestant on a glass version of America's next top fiber. Here's where the magic and physics really show off. That molten glass is pushed downward through a platinum alloy plate called a bushing, which is full of microscopic holes. Imagine a shower head, but instead of water, it's shooting out molten glass. As the glass squeezes through, it forms hundreds of hair-thin threads, each one thinner than a human hair. Immediately, they're stretched and cooled by air jets, kind of like glass yoga. The result? Silky strands of glass that look fragile but are stronger than you'd expect from something that used to live at the beach. Those strands are then wound onto high-speed spools, chopped or twisted together depending on what type of fiberglass is being made. It's like the world's most dangerous spaghetti factory. Fun fact! Fiberglass was discovered by accident in the 1930s when a scientist named Dale Kleist accidentally blasted molten glass with a high-pressure air jet. And instead of exploding, it produced a cloud of thin fibers. So yeah, fiberglass exists because someone literally missed their shot in a lab experiment. At this stage, we've got raw glass fibers, shiny, delicate, and ready for their glow up. Freshly spun glass fibers are a bit needy. They're brittle, they break easily, and they're terrible at holding hands, metaphorically. So they get treated with a chemical coating called sizing. This is like conditioner for glass. It helps the fibers stick together, resist damage, and bond better to resin later on. After their spa treatment, 
the fibers are gathered and shaped into different forms. Mats, which are random webs of fibers, like a cobweb built by a caffeinated spider. Woven cloth, where the fibers are crisscrossed neatly like fabric. Rovings, which are thick bundles of continuous strands. Each form is destined for a different type of fiberglass product. But the important thing is that the fibers are now manageable, flexible, and ready to party. Quality control is huge at this stage. Workers check fiber thickness, strength, and chemical consistency because one weird strand can ruin a whole batch. It's basically the hairstylist checking for split ends part of the process. But instead of shampoo, there's molten glass involved. Now, for the grand finale, turning those soft glass mats into something tough and unbreakable. The fibers are laid into molds and drenched in resin, usually polyester or epoxy. This resin is like the glue that binds everything together. But once cured, it's more like a super strong plastic. Once everything soaked, the molds are heated and pressed. The resin hardens, permanently locking the glass fibers inside. It's like laminating sand into immortality. Depending on the process, whether hand layup, vacuum infusion, or compression molding, the result can be flexible sheets or rock-solid panels. This is also the part where people working with fiberglass start looking like astronauts, because those tiny glass shards can irritate your skin like a million microscopic porcupines. So, unless you enjoy being itchy for three days, gloves and suits are mandatory. After curing, the finished fiberglass pops out, light, strong, and ready to be cut, shaped, or molded into whatever product comes next. So there you have it. Fiberglass starts as sand, melts into glass, gets spun into microscopic threads, dressed up with chemicals, and then hardened with resin into one of the toughest materials out there. And it all happened because one scientist accidentally sprayed molten glass with air. So next time you walk on a beach, just remember, beneath your feet is the raw material for some of the most durable stuff humans make. Sand might not look impressive now, but given enough heat, pressure, and a platinum shower head, it could be tomorrow's fiberglass masterpiece. If you enjoyed this story of accidental genius, hit like, subscribe, and don't try to melt sand in your kitchen. Also, if you have suggestions for our next video, feel free to share them in the comments below. We'll be sure to give you an acknowledgement for your contribution. If you enjoyed this video, please check out our other bingeable channels. Thank you for tuning in and join us next time here in the channel that answers all the why, what, who, where, and how questions you've always wondered about here on Explaining Everything.